Whenever you watch a lunar eclipse, you are seeing the Earth eclipsing the Moon by blocking the sunlight to it. Similar to what happens with a solar eclipse here on Earth when the Moon blocks out the Sun to the viewer's perspective. That shadow the Earth casts is called the Umbra, and you can observe this for yourself by going out and spotting the International Space Station passing overhead. When it crosses the terminator of the Earth into shadow, it blinks out. My guest today has identified a very peculiar phenomenon related directly to the Earth's shadow. Transient star-like points that appear as geosynchronous objects in the sky in very precise astronomical plates taken in the early 1950s at the Mount Palomar Observatory that predate the launch of Sputnik in 1957. These are from before the dawn of the space age, yet they seem to show objects in orbit of Earth. One might expect flaws in the emulsion of the glass plates used for the exposures back then, but there is a confounding aspect to this. These objects strongly correlate with the umbra of the Earth. They go into shadow, virtually eliminating that they might be an effect of the telescope. Very strange indeed. You have fallen into Event Horizon with John Michael Godier. Dr. Beatrice Villarroel, welcome back to the program. Thank you. Pleasure to be back. Yet another round and new discoveries and the research surrounding transients, things that, that appear and disappear in photographic plates, has progressed. Give us a nice overview of your most recent research into uh, the Palomar transients. So um, now a few years have passed since we started with this topic. So it, it started with that we found these kind of objects, transients that appeared and vanished some years ago, like, and then we started finding some of them in groups that appeared and vanished. Then we automated the processes. So my colleague, Enrique Solano, he uh, automated the process to uh, extract lots of these transients that appear and vanish on the Palomar plates. And we also have the citizen science project that where a lot of people have been going through images to find similar types of transients. We have thousands of these from the citizen science project, many more from the um, automated processes. So that's where we have been in the last years. Now, a few years have passed since we started with this topic, talking about objects that appear and disappear. And we have progressed with this research. We have to try to understand more, of course, the nature of it. And one clue that we got was that we had some very interesting cases. We had a case where we saw a triple transient happening on the 19th of July, 1952. It was found by my colleague Enrique Solano when he did this automatic search for transients and he found some hundred thousands of transients. And then this triple transient was super beautiful, like three bright stars that appear and vanish. And as a coincidence, it happened on the date of the most famous UFO mass sighting, which happened in Washington, D.C. On, on two consecutive weekends. And this was a very, very interesting coincidence. And we have been exploring more of that, trying to see if it was a, just a coincidence, because we had one more candidate, like candidate group of transients that appeared and vanished at the same time, where you can see five objects in a narrow band from the 27th of July, 1952, which is the second weekend of the Washington UFO flyover. And of course, when you have one coincidence, you say, okay, maybe it's just a coincidence. When you have two coincidences for each from one of the two weekends of the Washington flyover, it was only two weekends, then you really start wondering if, is there a correlation between the transients, these objects that we see and UFO events. And uh, so my colleague, Stephen Bruel, he used the data set of Enrique. Uh, he took this data set of Enrique. So this was a little bit like a, a, of, of a cleaner data set from the upper hemisphere, northern hemisphere. Something like 106,000 transients. They have not been visually inspected. So there are still, there's a lot of false positives there. There can be a lot of plate defect and other kind of false positives. Like one source of false positives is, for example, if you have one plate has slightly uh, bigger depth than the other. 
but sometimes you get automatic algorithms get confused. Anyway, so he took these two samples and he has been looking for correlations in time between these transients and UFO events and between the transients and nuclear bomb tests and between nuclear bomb tests and UFO events. And guess what? He finds statistically significant correlations between all three. So they all correlate with each other in t- temporarily within one day. You can see these correlations. So that's kind of a cool thing. It is, but that's not to interpret this as anything except a correlation. In other words, people there. some people are going to say, well, it's aliens or things like that. But we can't really jump to those conclusions here. Rather, we just say something is correlating. Exactly. And it's, it's very unusual. And in one of the papers, you go into a very strange phenomenon that was noted with nuclear testing. And that is Cherenkov radiation, basically blue orbs in fallout areas where there was, was fallout, which is a, a natural radioactive effect. You, if you see the blue glow of a nuclear reactor, that's Cherenkov radiation. Then you should run. And um, Then one should run. Hmm? I mean, if you see the blue glow. Oh, yeah. If you see the blue glow, don't go near it. I, well, actually, for that matter, if you see a UFO, don't go near it. Well, uh, that's the trouble. If I would see a UFO, I probably would run towards it. it. It is, but one of the very few instances where the U.S. government paid out for a, an injured service person was a UFO. Where they, Well, I mean, they pay out for, obviously, many reasons. But the one that, that they were actually able to do was, was damage someone sustained from... Uh, from a UFO, which I think was Rendlesham Forest, as I recall. But anyway, the uh, if you see a UFO, don't run to it. Okay. And oh, and and there or 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 try to communicate with it, because you know that, that <laughs> <laughs> contact the UN before you contact the UFO. 